There's a comedic version of this. I don't know if you've seen this movie. It's called The Death of Stalin. Yeah. Uh, I, I I like that. I wish it wasn't so... There's a movie called Inglorious Bastards about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Hitler and World War, you know, so on. For some reason, those movies piss me off. I know a lot of people love them, but, like, I just feel like uh, there's not enough good movies, even about Hitler. There's good movies about the Holocaust. But even Hitler, there's a movie called Downfall that people should watch. I think it's the last few days of Hitler. That's a good movie. Turned into a meme. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's good. But on Stalin, I feel like I may be wrong on this, but at least in the English-speaking world, there's not good movies about the evil of Stalin. That's true. Let's try to see that. I actually, so I, I I agree with you on Inglorious Bastard. I didn't love the movie um, because I felt like kind of the, the stylizing of it, right? The whole like Tarantino kind of um, Tarantinoism, yeah. if you will, kind of detracted from it and made it seem like unserious a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but Death of Stalin, I felt differently. Maybe it's because of the comedy to begin with. So it's not like I'm expecting, you know, right. seriousness. But it kind of depicted the absurdity of the whole situation in a way, right? Uh, I mean, it was funny, so maybe it does make light of it, but it, it something grows probably like this, right? Like a bunch of kind of people, they're like, oh shit, right? Like You're right. But like, the thing is, it was so close to like what probably was reality. It was caricaturing reality to where I think an observer might think that this is not, like they might think it's a comedy in well in reality th this is that's the absurdity of uh how people act with dictators i mean right. that's it, i guess it was too close to reality for me yeah. the <laughs> and, kind of banality of like what were eventually like fairly evil acts right but like yeah they're they're just a bunch of people trying to survive. Because <laughs> like, I, I think there's a good, I haven't watched it yet, the good movie on, uh, the movie on Churchill um, with uh, Gary Oldman, I think is Gary Oldman. I might be making that up. But I think he won, like he was nominated for an Oscar or something. So I like, I love these movies about these humans and Stalin, like Chernobyl made me realize the, the HBO show that there's not enough movies about Russia that capture uh, that spirit i'm sure it might be in, in in russian there is but the fact that some british dude that like did comedy i feel like he did like hangover or some shit like that i don't know if you're familiar with the person who created chernobyl but he was just like some guy that doesn't know anything about russia and mm -hmm. he just went in and just studied it like did a good job of creating a and then got it so accurate like poetically and uh, the facts that you need to get accurate he got accurate just the spirit of it down to like the bowls that pets use, just the whole feel of it. It's mm -hmm. no, it it good, yeah, I saw the series. Yeah, it's it's incredible. It's, it made me, made me wish that somebody did a good, like um, 1930s, uh, like starvation that Stalin led to, like leading up to World War II and in, in World War II itself, like Stalingrad and so on. Like, I feel like that story needs to be told. Yeah. Millions of people died. It, and it's, it's, to me, it's so much more fascinating than Hitler because Hitler is like a caricature of evil almost that it's so, especially with the Holocaust, it's so difficult to imagine that something like that is possible ever again. Stalin to me represents something that is possible. Like the, the so interesting, like the bureaucracy of it is so fascinating that it potentially might be happening in the world now, like that we're not aware of, like with North Korea, another one that like there should be a good film on. Mm -hmm. And like the possible things that could be happening in China with overreach of government. I don't know, there, there's, there's a lot of possibilities there, I suppose. Yeah, I, I wonder how much, you know, I guess the archives should be maybe more open nowadays, right? I mean, for a long time, they just, we didn't know, right? Yeah. Like, or anyways, no one in the West knew for sure. Well, there's a, I, I don't know if you know him, there's a guy named Stephen Kotkin. He's a historian of Stalin that I, I spoke to on this podcast. I'll speak to him again. The guy knows his shit on Stalin. Mm -hmm. He like read everything. And it's, That's cool. it's so fascinating to, to, to talk to somebody. 
Like he knows Stalin better than Stalin knew himself. <laughs> it's crazy. Like you have, so he's, I think he's a Princeton. He, he is basically, his whole life is Stalin. Studying Stalin. Yeah, it's, it's great. And in that context, he also talks about and writes about Putin a little bit. 